Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, Big Boy Reviews here. So, today I wanted to talk a little bit about my favorite author of all time, uh, which is obviously Cormac McCarthy, that's the reason you clicked on this video. Um, <clears throat> as of today, I have completely finished my uh, collection of all of his works, and I thought that I would go down through the list, give little mini reviews and my thoughts about each and every one of them, um, and some vague overviews of the ones that I haven't read yet, but I have read um, just over half of all of these, so um, I'm well on my way, so that's good. Um, so we'll start right off the bat with um, Sutri. This is the one I'm working on right now. As you can see from my bookmark, I'm just about done. I'll have a review out for this in a couple days, actually. It's a really interesting book, actually, because Basically, the, the back tells you that it is a man <clears throat> named Cornelius Setchery who lives a forsaken life in a houseboat on the Tennessee River. That's all it tells you. So, this book is a very plotless tale. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm going to have a review in a couple days that'll talk more about that. Um, but I'll just leave you with this. This is the most entertaining plotless story I've ever read. And so, and I think it's actually his longest book, too. Um, it's close to 500 pages, so it's pretty lengthy for Cormac. Next, we have one of his most praised books of all time. I actually have three editions of it. Uh, one's the audiobook, one's a hardcover, and one is the uh, mass market type paperback thing. Um, but what it is is Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian. Um, this book is just so amazing and uh, it actually was listed as one of the top 100 books of the past century <clears throat> in American literature, so that's telling you something right there. This book is a western, or some people call it an anti-western. It's a very, very strange western. If you've ever read one, uh, this is not like any other you've ever read. Um, Blood Meridian is a very strange tale but a very well-written tale. I mean, this is the most poetic book I have ever read. This book, every other word, is a adjective, adjective I've never heard of in my entire life. If you guys want to see my full review, you can check it out on my uh, channel. But this book is basically about a group of scalp hunters um, during the 1800s. Uh, actually, I think it might actually go into the early 1900s, but... Uh, 1850, yep, okay, 1850, uh, and it follows, uh, the main character's name is The Kid, and he's kind of, you, you care about him, but at the same time, you don't, and that goes for most of the characters in this book, I mean, I mean, they are just very, very bad people, but it really shows the evil in humankind, and, um, you can still see glimpses in in some characters of uh, what they could have been good people um, but for the most part you just see evil at its fullest and Cormac McCarthy wrote a awesome violent story with Blood Meridian next we have which is one of his best uh, No Country for Old Men this book is so fantastic um, it's action-packed and it is intense uh basically it is about a man named Llewellyn Moss who stumbles on a drug deal gone bad um basically he finds a suitcase filled with uh 2.4 million dollars and uh runs down the old dusty trail and basically gets chased for the entire book uh which isn't that long but still a uh, very intense thriller and the main antagonist of this, Anton Sugar, or Sugra, uh, he, he's got a weird name, but that man is probably the coolest villain next to the judge in Blood Meridian. Uh, very awesome villain, and this also shows you some very evil sides to people, and uh, the film is pretty good too. I actually have three copies on, of it on Blu-ray, that's kind of a long story, but no Country for Old Men is amazing, and it was actually the second book I ever read uh, by this man. Now we come to uh, the Border Trilogy, which Cormac McCarthy is pretty no well known for. Um, it's comprised of these three books right here. Uh, it starts off with All the Pretty Horses, uh, 
This book was fantastic. It actually got a National Book Award, uh, which is pretty uh, deserving of that in my opinion. Um, I have a review for this if you want to know more about it, uh, same as No Country for Old Men on my channel. Um, so if you want a more in-depth look at it, go ahead and check that out. But basically this is about a, uh, a man named, or actually he's kind of a kid. In the film adaptation with Matt Damon, he's a man, but uh, in the book he is a kid. I think he's 17 years old or 16 years old. And his name is John Grady Cole, and he has a best friend named Racy, uh, <laughs> Lacey Rollins. Uh, basically, his, his house is sold because his parents are split up, and uh, the mom ends up selling it, and he's like, I loved that house, so he kind of runs away with Lacey Rollins. This has been described a lot like um, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, that kind of thing. It's just a very adventurous tale. It's so good. He kind of falls in love with a girl that he shouldn't um, on this ranch that him and Lacey go to and it kind of goes into a downward spiral of evilness. Uh, this book is kind of probably the most lighthearted of all the books I've read personally. Um, but it still does have some of those gritty aspects. So I definitely recommend All the Pretty Horses. Next in the Border Trilogy is The Crossing. Um, I actually, you can still see my bookmark. I got, um, about a quarter into this one. I think this is his second longest book he ever wrote. Um, but I stopped because actually with this one, this is the first time I can ever say this about a Cormac McCarthy book is I got really kind of bummed out by the pacing and I really, I can really appreciate a slow book, but... This one was just a little bit too slow for me, and I was getting confused in some parts, so I just kind of uh, put this on the back burner for a little while. Um, but this one is about another man, or yeah, he's he's in his 20s. His name is Billy Parham, and he finds a wolf, a she-wolf, on his property, and she's um, killing some of his cattle, uh, like very violently. <laughs> And um, basically him and his father go out and trap the wolf and he basically runs away from home just like John Grady Cole did and takes the wolf back to Mexico, which is why it's called The Crossing. He crosses a couple times throughout the book. And this book is basically about the people he meets along his journeys. But I just couldn't get into the slow beginning. I'll, I'll definitely read this in my lifetime at some point, but um, I do not have a review for this. It will definitely be read though. And the third book in the Border Trilogy is Cities of the Plain. Uh, this one, both of the characters from the first two books actually meet up on another ranch. Um, and I'm not too sure <laughs> much after that, but um, I am very excited to find out how that goes down. I still obviously need to read The Crossing to get to this one, um, but I am kind of excited to see how they interact with one another because I kind of miss reading about John Grady Cole a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Next we have a play that Cormac did called The Sunset Limited. I actually recently read this about a week and a half ago and I have a review for that. It's a play, it's very short as you can see, it's literally 60 pages long. Uh, this one is about two men sitting at a coffee table having a discussion and the whole book or the whole play is just them talking there's nothing else it's just like a 60 page long dialogue sequence um, and I thought it was really well done I gave it a lot of high praises in my review um, basically there's two characters white and black one's white one's black and the white one tried to commit suicide by jumping in a train jumping in front of a train called the Sunset Limited but the black saved him and the black is a Christian and he takes the white back to his um, apartment. He tries to like, you know, show him the good side of Christianity and stuff and trying to like keep him distracted from going and try to commit suicide again because he knows that there's a very good possibility that if he lets this man go without changing his opinion on life, he could um, indeed commit suicide. So that is the story to The Sunset Limited. Um, it was a very good play, I thought, and I had a very good time reading it. Next, we have Outer Dark, which I literally got in the mail today. Um, not too long ago, actually, the mail just came. Uh, this finished. This was the book that finished my collection. Um, I do not know too much about this book. I do know that it has to do with a sister and a brother, 
and the sister has a baby and the brother like hides it in the woods or something like that and tells uh, the sister that it died but uh, it, this one has a female protagonist and um, I heard it's pretty dark because it says dark right in the title <laughs> but uh, yeah I am looking forward to reading this one it's pretty short so uh, yeah, I don't have too much on this one, but there will be a review for it in the future. All right, here we go. The next one is The Road, which is just like the staple point of uh, Cormac McCarthy books. Everybody knows about The Road. Uh, you want to know why? Because Oprah Winfrey said this book is good, so uh, everybody flipped out about it, which I honestly got the impression that Cormac didn't really like all that attention. Um, he's a very like reclusive man. He hopped from motel to motel all his life. He was so poor. Um, and he was just a recluse. He's only done one interview, and that was with Oprah Winfrey, and that basically skyrocketed his career because, I'll be honest, um, I'm not the biggest Oprah Winfrey fan, but uh, if she hadn't interviewed him and publicized the, uh, the road so much, I probably wouldn't even have all this, uh, all these books. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess it's good in a way, but I honestly don't think he liked all that uh, publicity. But anyway, enough of that little rant, I don't know where that came from. Um, the Road is about an unnamed man and an unnamed son walking through a post-apocalyptic world um, that we never find out why the world got this way or anything. Um, and it's, it's a different change of pace that I feel like a lot of people who read books hadn't seen before um, until Cormac McCarthy wrote this and I feel like a lot of people were surprised at how um, it actually plays out and how the dialogue and he I, I, I haven't said this yet but he does not use any punctuation I mean he uses a comma here and there um, he doesn't doesn't use quotation marks he he doesn't use exclamation points he doesn't use anything like that not a single question mark in any of these so I feel like that was a, a big shocker to people when they read this because this is definitely his most popular book um, but I gotta say for myself it's probably my least favorite of the ones I have read by him uh, finished anyway as of right now it'd be the crossing just because I got a little bit uh, thought it was a little bit tedious but um, for the ones I have finished reading, The Road was probably my least favorite out of his books, actually. Um, but it's the one that everybody else likes, which is kind of weird. Um, but The Road is still a good book, don't get me wrong. Uh, and this is... It actually won the Pulitzer Prize right there, so uh, it's definitely worthy of that, I think. But um, I really think that other people should just not just read this one, read everything else. I mean, every everything he writes is gold. Um, but, yeah, The Road. I got a review for this on my channel. And then we got The Orchard Keeper, which is his first book written in 1964, I believe. Uh, he's been writing since the 60s, and um, he only has 11 or 12 books, which is pretty crazy. Um, he doesn't put them out too often, um, but The Orchard Keeper is what started him off, and it sold terribly. Nobody read this, I don't know why, but... Um, Anyway, I don't really know too much about it. it. I know that it's a very Faulkner type story. He, he was obsessed with William Faulkner. It's his biggest inspiration. So I heard this book is a lot like a Faulkner book. Um, it's, I think it's about a young boy and he's our main protagonist. And then there's another man, who, a, a, a dark bandit type of guy who kills the boy's father. But, and then they, uh, the boy meets this villain but neither of them know that the villain killed the father. Um, and they kind of converse in some way. I don't really know the story of this one too much. Uh, it's definitely on my list for the ones to read next. Um, but that's all, about all I can give you for this one. And next we got The Stone Mason. Uh, this is a play, another play that uh, Cormac McCarthy did. This one tells a story of a family of stonemasons, which I'm guessing is some kind of uh, form of mining or something. That's the that's the picture that comes into my head anyway. Um, it's a play in five acts, and it just kind of circles around this uh, uh, African American family um, during the 1970s. So um, sorry once again, I don't know too much about this one, but. Uh, it does sound very good. And last, we got Child of God, which I have recently read, actually. Um, so that means that there is a review on my channel for this. Um, 
This is the story of Lesser Bollard, and this is the darkest, I don't care what anybody says, this is the darkest book Cormac McCarthy ever wrote. Uh, probably next to Blood Meridian, but this is still darker. This is so disturbing. This book is awesome. Um, <clears throat> it tells the story of a man who is an outcast in his town. Uh, when does this take place? I believe it doesn't actually tell you, but I, I think this was around the 60s or 70s. Um, basically, it's about a social outcast who is falsely accused of raping a woman. Um, <clears throat> and after that kind of happens, he turns uh, a little bit violent. Uh, and this is actually based on true murders that have happened um, in the town, uh, what state? East Tennessee. Uh, this actually revolves around real murders during that time. And let me tell you guys, this book is disturbing. I don't know how Cormac McCarthy put his mind at this mindset of being like such a creep. Um, but <laughs> you will see a lot of unnatural um, actions. And wow, this book is very spooky and the ending is just crazy good so um i highly recommend child of god uh it was awesome and spooky so there you go guys that was uh every single cormac mccarthy book in a nutshell um i love this author nobody has inspired me more i as a writer myself um i just look at this man's work and i am in awe by all of it and uh he continues to inspire me i still have what like four or five of these to read no i think it's actually like six uh so yeah he is continuing to inspire me and uh just an amazing author the best author i've ever read um so check him out guys i'm serious awesome